All right. Howdy, everybody. This is Stephen Ramsden. I'm the director of the Charlie Bates Solar Astronomy Project. And every year we like to remind people that the winter and summer solstice is a perfect time to put up your pinhole camera so you can look at the sun and you can get a great uh, graph that shows the path of the sun through the sky every day. These cameras are also known as camera obscura, which is um, basically it means dark room and it's a room or a box or a can or something with a tiny pinhole that lets light in and the light is reversed and inverted and forms an image on the inside of the dark area, the can or the room or however you want to do it. It's called camera obscura. And it was proposed back in the late 1600s. Uh, Robert Hooke wrote the first paper on how to do this. And it's been used in all sorts of art forms ever since. It's very simple to do and it's easy to make. Um, and this is the time of year where you need to get to um, to collecting your cans and making your camera obscura. So we're gonna talk about what to do, what you need and how to do it. And first I'm gonna show you a couple of photographs of what it looks like, the uh, results from the camera obscura. So as you can see, um, it records the path of the sun and any other uh, bright object in the sky uh, over, over a year's time. So if you started on, say, December 21st, which is the northern hemisphere's winter solstice, the sun will be at its lowest point in the sky. And that gives you a good starting point, because every day after that, until June 21st, which is our summer solstice in the northern hemisphere, the sun gets a little bit higher every day at noon. So it does this number, you know, rises in the east, sets in the west, and it gets a little higher every day until June 21st. And if you let the pinhole camera run for that six month period, you uh, will have an awesome solography image of the sun's path through the sky. And you can get all kind of crazy with them and do all kind of wacky stuff. You can have cool foregrounds in your image. Um, it's a really cool thing to do, but it takes a little practice and it might take you a couple tries, you know, a couple years the first time you do it to, uh, to get it right. Um, there's plenty of tutorials on the web, so I thought I would add my own to it. Normally we would do a um, meeting, like here's a really cool solography uh, image. Well, it won't let me get a full view, all right, um, of, of the sun. And this is, you know, that that's really sharp curvature, parabolic curvature in nature is caused by a really small, thin can. A wider can will have a flatter piece of photographic paper in the back and give you a more shallow image. There's a million different ways to do this, but today we're gonna start um, with the basic setup, which is uh, some cans. And you know, if you like beer, you can drink beer. If you're like me and you don't drink, you can use Diet Coke. Um, you need some photographic paper. Um, this is pretty much the standard Ilford uh, makes this, uh, it's an English company, and this is medium weight. It's a resin coated base. Um, it's five by seven inches. And this is a box of 50. I don't remember how much I paid for it. You know, it wasn't much 30 or $40 or whatever. And, um, actually this is a box of 100 and I've had this box for three years and it's been plenty enough to teach the classes that I do in this every year. And normally, uh, it would be, um, a live class that we would do through Sunlit Earth or the Charlie Bates Solar Astronomy Project. But uh, with the COVID-19 virus raging in the US, uh, not a good idea to do anything live. So yeah, I'm knocking over cans. Hang on. So uh, we're gonna do a, um, a video about it. So you need to have the photographic paper. You need a can opener. Any can opener will do. A pair of scissors. Um, you don't need to have a microphone like this one, which is recording what I'm saying. You need some tape, preferably black tape. Uh, some construction paper would be handy if you had that. Not necessary. Um, there's two different ways to do it. 
Uh, one way you would need to make a lid for the can out of construction paper. The other way you can just cut the bottom off of another can and, and make your lid. And that's what we're going to do in this video. The point of this is to take a, and since we're using five by seven paper, you need to get a can that's capable of holding a five by seven sheet of paper because you don't want to have to do a lot of cutting and trimming to make it work. These tall boy that we call them in the US, 16 ounce um, Coke cans are perfect for this five by seven paper. So basically you're gonna take a can like this one, you're gonna cut off the top of it. You're going to uh, get your photographic paper ready. Um, make sure the can is totally dry, has no liquid in it because liquid will absorb right into the paper and ruin your image. And then you'll wait six months and you'll have nothing but a bunch of wet uh, crap to deal with. So we don't want that. <clears throat> your can's got to be totally dry. And I've already cut a few of these cans up. Um, and a couple of these uh, smaller cans would help too to make your tops with. Um, really either size is fine for that. Just one moment. Mm -mm. I like a Diet Coke. And you can see what a felt figure I have from drinking the Diet Coke too, don't forget. And you need a little tape, like I said, and some photographic paper. So we're gonna get right to it and start cutting up our cans. I'm gonna switch over to a little bit better view so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Now here's our, uh, our empty can. It's a, uh, like I said, 16 ounce tall boy. Uh, first thing you wanna do is get the top off. So flip the top vertical, get your can opener, boom, turn it. It's not gonna come off 100% cleanly, but it will mostly come off and then you can pretty much bend it and play with it the rest of the way, okay? So there's that. You wanna get as smooth an opening as you can. So, I'm just going to bend it around a little bit until it comes off. These cans aren't designed to be opened by a can opener, but they can be. It's just aluminum. Very, very thin, cheap aluminum. So there you go. There's our top. We're going to discard that. It's still real sharp in here, so don't mess around trying to flatten anything down. Just leave it because it doesn't matter if there's some sharp edges. And again, your can needs to be totally dry, which this one isn't. So we're not going to use this one right now. We're going to use a totally dry one like this. Okay, and well, I'll use this other one here. So here's a can that's already been cut. And let's turn this up just a little bit, there you go. So here's a can that's already been cut clean and it's waiting for the paper install. The way this camera's gonna work is you're gonna set it up outside and point it to the uh, south. Uh, if you live in the Northern hemisphere, you're gonna point it either due south or due north. If you live in the Southern Hemisphere, let's see, how would that work? Yeah, you point it due north, um, maybe directly overhead if you live on the equator. You want it to be able to capture um, the sun at its highest and lowest point. So I live in Atlanta, which is 34 degrees, <clears throat> excuse me, 34 degrees latitude. So I'm gonna have um, my camera outside facing south. I may tilt it a little bit like that. It all depends on the foreground. Um, if you want to leave it vertical so it doesn't collect as much water through the hole, that's fine. But remember, the light is going to come in from the sun. It's going to be flipped and go down here. So if the sun's high, it's not going to print on the high part of the can. It's going to print on the lower part of the can. So the higher the sun gets, the more depth you need from the pin to the bottom of the can because the image is inverted. So we want to take a pin or a tack, a push pin, the smaller the better. You want the smallest thing you can use. This is a little push pin with the planet Mercury on top of it, okay? And I'm gonna take that pin and I'm gonna pick a spot that's, I gotta remember you're gonna put a cap on top of this when you're done that's gonna extend down to here and a little bit of tape down to there probably. So you wanna make your hole uh, right about that high so that you can get all the high points of the sun and the low points. 
And just imagine your image, the bottom of your image is going to be right here. And the top's going to be down there. So I'm going to take this and get the thinnest pin you can find because the smaller the hole, the finer the image detail. So let's put the hole right here. Just like that. Okay, so there it is. I'm not digging it out or anything. Let me see if I can get this back over on the other camera. See, I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna dig the hole or try to make it wide or anything like that. I just stuck the pin right in and there you can see it on the inside and just pull the pin right out. And you got this tiny little hole right here. Probably can't even see it on the camera. But make sure you remember where you put it <laughs> because when you get done cutting it, it's uh, it may be hard to find. That's why I put it in a conspicuous area on the can right there or at some place where I remember where it is. If you put it uh, just out here in the blank area, you may not be able to find it when you're done if you've made your hole small enough. All right, so that's good. We got our hole. Then we're going to take a Coke can like the one I just drank out of. Let's see. All right, all the liquids out of it. And I'm going to make a top for it. Okay, and you don't have to be pretty with this. It doesn't matter. The point of this is that it's going to fit over the top of this can and keep it waterproof and and uh, keep out the elements because it's going to be out there for six months. So take your scissors and just through and then start cutting. I know it seems a little messy, but it doesn't really matter what the edge is on this because you're going to cover the edge with tape. I just want it long enough to get over this little lip on the can and give me a nice tight seal. It doesn't have to be airtight, but you should try to get it as water resistant as possible because any water that gets in the camera is going to absorb right into the paper and ruin your image. Okay, so there's our little can top, okay? And it should fit with a little work uh, right over this, and it does. There you go, nice and tight. So now the can has a can bottom on both sides, and when it's sitting outside, um, here's our hole right here. Uh, any rainwater is either gonna collect up here and then overflow down the sides, or, you know, I'd rather it didn't have that, but it does. Um, but it's not going to go into the camera and that's what you want. Okay. So there's that. And we're going to tape that on to seal it at the end, but you don't want to tape it on yet because you don't have any photographic paper in there yet. Now, if I can get it back off, there we go. <laughs> this is a very important part uh, of the procedure because as soon as you take this paper out of the box, it starts exposing and the, uh, the, Ilford paper that we're using comes in this black uh, plastic wrapper to keep the light off of it. But I'm telling you, as soon as you take it out, man, it starts making an image and you got to be quick with it. And I would normally have the lights turned off while doing this, but since I'm filming a video, that's not a practical idea. So I'm going to take a piece of tape, just a small piece of tape. I'm going to fold over one edge of it so I can take it back off real quickly. And then I'm going to cover up my hole with the tape and I'll leave this on there until I deploy the camera because once the photographic paper is in there, you don't want any light going in there because it's going to start exposing as soon as you do. That. So I've got a can lid taken off, uh, a lid ready to go, a hole in the can and a piece of tape over it. Now I'm going to get ready to get my paper out. And when I get out the paper, it's going to be five by seven and I'm going to, curl it as soon as I can. This will be a quick thing and I'll slow-mo it. I'm going to curl it as soon as I can curl it and then stick it down inside the can. And what you want is, you know, five inches is not going to go all the way around the can. It's going to go about to the edge of this red stripe here. Everything else is going to be exposure paper, except for the part where the pinhole is, because obviously you don't want the paper covering the pinhole. <laughs> so you're going to have paper from here to here, and then a pinhole there exposing onto the paper. So any light from any angle 
almost up or down sides or whatever is going to expose on a certain part of this photographic paper. And the curvature of it is what gives you that parabolic shape in the images. So here we go. And I might screw this up. And if you do, don't worry about it. Just do another one. So pull out the paper, curl it, stick it in, and it's too tall. How about that? Maybe I should curl it this way, stick it in. And it's too long. See, sometimes you screw up. So I'm going to tear up this sheet of paper. And we're going to try again. All right. It's quite possible that the paper has, uh, or the can has gotten a little bit shorter than it used to be last year. But we're not going to let that worry us. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pull out another sheet of paper and make sure on this paper that you have the exposure side up because uh, if you don't, um, you want the, this, the only one side of the paper is, is sensitive to light and you want that to be on the inside of the can. All right, so I'm going to take this out, turn it over, trim off about this much, curl it quickly, stick it inside the can, make sure that my expose, exposure area is opposite of the pinhole, and then stick my lid on. Boom. Okay. So that was not difficult. I took off about this much of the paper. And again, it doesn't matter if it's a straight line or whatever. Um, as long as the paper fits in there, you're, you're good. Because what we're going to do with these, I know this video is a little bit longer than it could be, but you know, when you're filming a video by yourself in your home studio and mistakes happen, you know, you got to live with it, man. So what we've got now is a can with a pinhole stuck in it a lid on it cut from another can, which I'm gonna put down a little tighter because you don't want this to be opened again for six months. And I'm gonna secure this um, lid with another piece of tape. And what that looks like. Okay. I don't want my tape to block the light, remember? But I do want it to be pretty close. I wanted to secure this lid from coming off because these things, like I say, are gonna be out in the weather. There we go, about like that. I'll wrap it around. And like I say, again, if it's a little messy, who cares? You're not trying to make a Christmas ornament here. You're just trying to make something practical that will keep the can together, to keep moisture out as much as possible. All right. Now, a lot of times people will cut a little small cylinder of um, construction paper. And again, you don't have to be perfect, just uh, something about the size of this can. And uh, I'm just going to eyeball it because I don't really care if it's perfect or not because I'm going to put tape over it anyway. So, oops, yeah, that's really bad. <laughs> it's shaped more like a heart. Is that big enough? Now let's make it a little bit bigger. You could even just cut a square. And you'll see why in a minute, why it doesn't matter. And what this will do is give me, instead of having a depression at the top of the can that will collect water, this will allow me just to tape something over the top of the can um, that will divert the water. And that's what we're going to do. Because, you know, right now it's got this little hole in it. You don't want a bunch of water sitting on top of it or snow or, or dirt or whatever. It's just not a good idea. So let's pull out some tape. And remember, do not block your pinhole. Because the worst thing is uh, going out six months later to re retrieve these cameras and find out that you accidentally blocked your, your pinhole. Your photographic paper has nothing on it. You have wasted six months of your life. Um, and that's another good point. You know, you got to make about five or six of these things, really, and put them in different areas. I always put them up in pairs so that if one gets screwed up, then uh, I can count on the other one, or ho hopefully count on the other one. Two in the same area every time I deploy them gives me twice as likely of a chance that it's going to turn out good. All right. And again, 
whole point of this is just to divert water off the camera and keep it from getting wet inside. Let's do one more little piece of tape. Now, what does this look like to you? That's right, it looks like a pipe bomb. So you've probably seen news reports where people unfamiliar with science or have never done these things will see one of these taped onto a bridge or a foam pole or someplace with a good view and they'll immediately call the police because they think it's a pipe bomb. Um, this is the finished camera. You can label these things all day long and put, you know, this is not a bomb or solography camera and somebody is still going to call the cops if you put it out in, in plain view in the public. Uh, in Atlanta, a few years ago, our entire interstate system was shut down for about six hours because uh, Georgia State students put up about eight of these on a bridge in downtown Atlanta over the interstate. And some guy uh, with nothing better to do stopped and, and assumed they were bombs. So they called out the police and shut down the whole interstate system. Put these on your own property, just put them on your house, put them outside your window, whatever. Um, deploy them in a spot where people aren't going to notice them too much because somebody's going to mess with it. So I, I like to put mine just outside my window. I have a three-story house and I'll, I'll uh, get on a ladder or do it from the inside even. And I'll just place them on the outside of the window, either tape them or use a zip tie that's stapled to the, the wood and then a zip tie around it to hold it in place. You need a couple of them because you don't want it to turn this way and you don't want it to do any of that. You want it to stay perfectly still, even in uh, windy conditions, snow, rain, ice, whatever. You want it to be stiffly mounted and stay still. But don't mount it so stiff that you bend the can because that will screw everything up. Uh, once you get it mounted, you take your little tab that you made and you pull it off and then you leave it alone. You leave it alone for six months and you go back and retrieve it on uh, June 21st, or actually on June 22nd. And if you're off a couple of days, that's OK. But six months is will give you a nice image of the sun's path through the sky every day from as low as it gets to as high as it gets if you start on the winter solstice in the northern hemisphere if you start on the southern solstice or the summer solstice which is fine it'll just start with the highest one and go down from there you want to have a six month period and it doesn't really matter what day you start you can start this any day of the year as long as you remember exactly six months later to go get it down because you don't want double tracks because that makes it look funky too so i'm going to go through this one more time um, and I'll probably speed this up on the final video, but this is how we do it. This is how we do it. Um, this is from start to finish making a complete solar cam. All right. So I take off my, my lid. All right. Get rid of that. Boom. Uh, make sure it's dry. Look at it for a while. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right. Then take another can. Stick your uh, scissors through it. Bottom off that can. Pretty good. All righty. Make sure it's nice and dry. A little bit of this is the part where I usually end up in the emergency room. Take your thumbnail. I'm going to get this one out, which has um, the planet Uranus on top of it. I choose a good spot for my hole, about, about here. Pinch the hole, and you see it from the inside. Pull that back out. Get my can ready. I'm going to do my paper. Boom. 
it fit. Clean it up. Notice that the paper is not covering the opening of the can. Immediately cover it. I'll get you a little tape. Go around the edge. And there's my hole right there. Taping the lid on. I forgot to make my little piece of tape to cover the hole. That. A little tab on it. Cover the hole. All right. So now you have number two. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put some tape across the top. Always an adventure. This is for my next can. And I guess you can cut construction paper there if you want, or you can just put tape over it. It doesn't really matter. And again, do not cover the hole. <laughs> Can't tell you how many emails I've gotten from people who accidentally either forgot to make a hole or covered the hole. And then, you know, are very disappointed when it's time to harvest the image. I'm a guy, so we make a lot of grunts and we say all right a lot when we're doing stuff. All right. All right. All right. It's just what we do, man. Okay. So in four minutes, I've made two pinhole cameras ready to deploy. And again, when you put these cameras up, um, you want to put them out basically level. Uh, and you want to choose a view of the southern sky if you're in the northern hemisphere or the northern sky if you're in the southern hemisphere. I mean, you want it pointed towards the sun. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west, so you want it to be facing that direction. And remember, your hole's got to be, you know, a little bit higher, not in the middle of the cam, because you won't get the highest point if you do. The image is flipped, so the higher the sun gets, the lower on the paper it's going to record. So don't put your hole down in the middle. Put it up here as, as high as you're comfortable with without getting, you know, interfering with the lid. <clears throat> and use tape or uh, zip ties or whatever means you can put it on a pole somewhere uh, on your property if you can and remember that anything in the foreground of your image like if you put it uh, facing a beautiful forest vista or a city skyline or anything like that you're going to have the paths of the sun plus it's going to give you a pretty good image in black and white of the uh, foreground so it's pretty to put it where it's facing a a city or a, a lake or a house or, you know, just something interesting in the foreground. And when you get done with these, uh, when they've exposed for six months straight, you will go back and collect the uh, can. And you got to be very careful when you do that because you need to take off the tape and lid. Um, and as quickly as you can, Pull that paper out, stick it onto a scanner, and you only get one chance for this. So scan something else beforehand to make sure it's scanning the way you want. Stick it on that scanner, scan it into your computer, and you're going to end up with a negative, uh, just like a film negative. And you want to put that into Photoshop or whatever. Um, Topaz is my favorite imaging processing software now. You want to put that into uh, a photo imaging, photo editor. And then you can make all these wonderful uh, images that you saw on the previous screen. These are all photoshopped um, 
negatives from the can because uh, like here's one that didn't go too well, but it still looks pretty cool. Okay, that's an analemma with photography. Uh, here's a really cool foreground, you know, an iceberg or a mountain or something with that. But what you get out of the can is a negative image and you put it into your photo editing software and you convert it over to this. Okay, so thus concludes our video workshop on how to make a pinhole camera and how to mount it. And if you want more information, uh, you can search the internet. There's about 50,000 better videos than this on how to do it. Um, and you can always email me, uh, sramston at solarastronomy.org. Or you can join our Facebook group, the Charlie Bates Solar Astronomy Project or Sunlit Earth. We are a nonprofit that teaches about the sun in 28 countries around the world. We just added Ecuador, so we're proud of that. Anyway, adios, and we will see your pinhole camera results on June 22nd.